I, um, I'm going to give an overview of uh, what FISA is. How many people before two weeks ago had heard of FISA? <laughs> right. Notice I didn't put my hand up. I'm not a foreign About spy. Seven people. Um, let me say, before I get to that, um, two things. Uh, first of all, in terms of the process uh, that we're facing with this uh, legislation, uh, we have to get this right. And we have to spend the time uh, to get this uh, right. However much we want to um, have a response to the events of uh, September 11th, um, the uh, process of amending these very complicated statutes is one that requires a lot of thought and a lot of um, dialogue. And in terms of the um, civil liberties community, I think that there are um, many who agree that um, changes in the law need to be made or may be appropriate. Some changes that have been discussed for a long time before the events of September 11, and some of these provisions really have nothing to do uh, directly with terrorism. They re relate to um, all kinds of uh, criminal investigations or uh, foreign counterintelligence investigations. But we have four very complicated statutory provisions. And many of them have not been fully, I think, debated and fully understood by the members who are going to be asked to vote on these things. And one, that's one of the purposes of this forum. But I think that um, you'll be seeing as Congress moves forward in the next several days, perhaps in the House Judiciary Committee, that there is still not an understanding of uh, all of what's being done here. And I would point to one provision that um, John Podesta mentioned, which is the so-called computer trespasser um, provision, uh, which was section 106 in the administration's uh, bill and is now section 105 in the Conyers uh, Sensenbrenner bill. And this is a provision which um, on its face, we first didn't pay attention to, I have to say honestly. Um, at CDT, we sort of glossed over it, and I think others did too. But the more and more we look at this, the more broad it is. And this is a provision that I think has very little, if anything, to do with terrorism. It's an anti-hacker provision. It has to do with hacking. Uh, in fact, it's a proposal that was first put on the table in, a, in some form last year um, by the Clinton administration um, or by some in the Senate uh, following the um, dedicated denial of service attacks against eBay and uh, Yahoo. So it's not really a terrorism provision. And what it's trying to do is get at this question of the hacker who's intruded on a computer system and is manipulating or using that computer system and then sending out either commands or attacks on other computer systems. And can the systems operator ask the government to come in and say, help us figure out what's going on here? But how you draft this is extremely difficult, and I have to say it's not there in this proposal, which talks in terms of unauthorized access to a computer system. If I look over your shoulder, or if I go to your computer, or if you have terms of service, for example, if you're AOL or an ISP and you have terms of service that say you cannot use this computer system to um, download copyrighted music in violation of anybody's um, uh, uh, intellectual property rights, and you do that, you are using that, potentially using that system for an unauthorized purpose. And at that point there, the ISP can tell the government, monitor this person's communications. In fact, if you read it, it actually says that they can also monitor your phone communications, which is clearly not what was intended, but it talks about monitoring um, all uh, communications. So that's a classic case of a provision that has potentially wide application. As John said, could potentially be a huge departure from the concept that a government, that the government 
in order to intercept your communications needs a court order. And it's sort of passed under the, um, the radar screen here. FISA. FISA is the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. It was first adopted in 1978 to cover um, electronic surveillance. Back in 1978 and uh, through the period of the 70s, there was actually a debate about whether the government had the authority to intercept communications without um, probable cause to believe that a crime was being committed. And there was a debate about whether the president had inherent authority as uh, the president and commander in chief to carry out uh, without a court warrant upon the president's own um, authority or upon the president's authority delegated to the attorney general or to the FBI director to carry out um, uh, wiretaps of, um, in the name of national security. And in order to put that on a, found, a legal foundation and in order to set rules for when the government could monitor uh, communications, back then largely telephone, monitor communications uh, in national security cases, FISA was enacted. And FISA in many respects is very different from Title III. First of all, uh, the court is a secret uh, special court set up. They are um, constitutional judges, Article III judges, specially designated by the um, uh, Chief Justice of the United States, they meet at a, a special court created on the fifth floor of the um, uh, Justice Department. And they issue orders. The orders are applied for by the Attorney General and his uh, counsel. And the court can issue an order based upon a finding of probable cause to believe that the target of the surveillance is an agent of a foreign power. And foreign power is defined as a foreign government, a foreign faction, a political party, a commercial entity that's wholly controlled by a foreign government, or an international terrorist organization. Now, again, it does not require probable cause to believe that a crime was being committed. You can intercept um, on a, a mere finding of agent of a foreign power in the case of a U.S. person, it's sort of a quasi-criminal standard activities that involve or may involve a violation of the law. The orders uh, are issued secretly and the surveillances are conducted secretly and unlike FISA, there is never notice to the target of the surveillance. Under Title III, once the uh, intercept is concluded, and the investigation uh, covert phase of the investigation concludes, the target is notified and can assert any rights that he might have to a violation of his privacy. If the government does not proceed criminally under a FISA tap, then um, the, the target is never notified. And even if he is notified and there is a criminal prosecution, he never gets to see the underlying basis for the uh, wiretap, and that makes it hard to challenge the um, wiretap. Now, all of these special uh, rules were established on the theory that this would largely be directed against foreign nationals or foreign embassies, offices of foreign uh, powers, and that the purpose would be to collect foreign intelligence, which would be used by the president and the national uh, defense establishment and the intelligence uh, community in foreign policy purposes, and that um, by and large, this uh, would not be used, or the purpose of it would not be for uh, criminal prosecutions. Now, it's important to note, though, that if evidence of a crime is collected under FISA, there is absolutely no prohibition or limitation on the sharing of that information with criminal justice officials. So if you're under a FISA tap and you collect evidence of a crime, you can use that in a criminal prosecution. You can disclose that to prosecutors. There is no limitation on that sharing of information. But the key protection was this concept of what is the purpose of this. 
And the purpose was the collection of foreign intelligence. And one of the changes being sought by the administration is to eliminate that purpose test and to say that these extraordinary FISA procedures and wiretapping in the absence of any probable cause to believe that a crime uh, is being committed uh, and this secrecy could be used where one of the purposes is foreign intelligence, but one of the purposes from the outset is the collection of criminal evidence. And it's our view that once that happens, that why would any prosecutor ever go the route of a um, Title III application if he has the uh, FISA uh, route available to him and much broader uh, latitude? FISA was amended um, twice. Once in 1994 to extend the um, electronic surveillance authority to physical searches. So the government was given under pretty much the same standard the uh, ability to get a secret order to basically break into somebody's house or apartment or office and to take things or copy things or alter things uh, in that uh, <coughs> private space. And again, no notice ever, unlike a normal search, a uh, normal physical search generally requires, I think should always require contemporaneous notice, uh, but uh, in any case always requires some notice and some inventory of the things taken. Um, so physical search authority was added in 94. And in 98, a pen register authority was created. Up until 98, if the government wanted to do a pen register in the uh, foreign intelligence arena, they had to get a full FISA order. Uh, they were given uh, the ability to obtain uh, FISA uh, authority for pen registers under a, a lower standard. And also authority was given to the FISA court to issue orders to seize business records or uh, to compel disclosure of business records. Again, on the basic FISA finding that um, it's relevant to a um, investigation and that the information pertains to an agent of a foreign power. The administration is proposing taking that court order approach for um, uh, access to business records and replacing it with an administrative subpoena. An administrative subpoena is a piece of paper signed by an FBI agent saying, give me everything you have. Um, it's issued on just the say-so of the uh, agent with no uh, judicial review. And that's another proposal I think that needs to be looked at carefully. I will stop there. Uh, I would simply say that probably the most far-reaching and most extensive and most important changes that are in the administration bill are in the section Title I, Subtitle B, dealing with the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And if you think about how some of it feeds back into the Internet, you see the tremendous breadth of what's being proposed by the administration there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nelson.